Hello. Me, 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 me. Sinking. Um, hi. I'm back. <laughs> um, got a haircut. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Been kind of dormant because school's just never ends it feels like though it's about to in like a few weeks and i got like three projects i gotta do and it's all just gonna pile up i want to do it all at the same time because that's how my brain works <laughs> um but this title of this video potentially is making someone panic um don't 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 worry about it it's not like incriminating in any way You'll all find out why I'm giving this forlorn warning to uh, whoever. Um, this is everything that you think it is, but not. In oral communications, a once upon a time ago, I gave a speech. It was actually my first oral communication speech I ever gave, in this class anyway. Um, it was a personal narrative speech about something somebody said to me um, about me being toxically masculine. The prompt was like something like, has anybody ever said anything uh, mildly incriminating to you? Or like, prompted you to rethink how you think about things? And this happened to me in just the semester before. So I was like, boom, let's talk about it. Um, and I was hesitant to talk about it because this involves talking about another person. This happened to me. This happened with a real person and not... I've talked about real people before, and that went so great. <laughs> uh, so I was really hesitant to talk about any of this. And another, the next reason why I was afraid to talk about it is because I talk about the patri patriarchy and how it like, it's just in my video, and that's like terrifying for some people. Um, I'm afraid my verbid. Well, my phraseology and the words that I use are going to be misinterpreted. But I think I just watched the speech over again. I think the way I put it will clarify that I'm a feminist, I care about these issues, and the fact that I'm even making the speech shows that I care about a lot of things in my community. Um, and the third thing that I wanted to talk about in this little intro This person, I, I didn't get to put this in my speech because I was debilitatingly anxious, almost. <laughs> I, it just didn't come out of my mouth, but I really wanted this to be in my speech. Um, I was like, shoot, I didn't say that. Um, this person that you will learn about in this speech, uh, talked to me, um, and told me in plain conversation we're having something similar to this toxic masculinity bullshit too. Um, that I had the worst characteristics of a man. I don't really think I deserve that. I don't think I am that. I don't think I have those characteristics. I am by nature boyish. And I will talk about that in the speech. But I do not believe I deserved that comment. Even if it was playful. Even if you didn't mean it. Even if you did. I didn't and don't deserve that comment. And I openly reject that right here! Um, so yeah. Shit sucks. This sucks. Uh. But I want to talk about it. So if you have any comments below, let me know. Let me know how awful I am. Um, or if you agree, if you've ever had anything like this happen to you, because honestly, this was terrifying to me because it, I mean, this is, this is some, this is a member of my community telling me this. You'll, you'll get the context later. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. All right. Hello everyone. I'm Maddie. I, you know, not an alcoholic or anything, uh, <laughs> but so today I'm here to talk about toxic masculinity. What, what do you think that means? Because for me, I connotate like, I don't know, like a Spider-Man's 80s, like toxic waste barrel with like just nothing good. Just green, 
like Nickelodeon slime coming out of it. Um, somebody called you that because somebody called me that and it had a profound effect on me for a lot of reasons, not till later, sort of a retrospect kind of thing, but I ended up learning a lot about it um, through this. So, in the Lazy Lounge, not too far away, in a semester not too long ago, I was talking to a girl, in a way. Um, it basically, well, let me tell you about this girl. My gosh, did you know she had a girlfriend? Oh my god, did she have a girlfriend? Because, man, if you didn't know she had a girlfriend, you're kind of daft because she was talking about it pretty much every other sentence. But she was still talking to me, and for me, that made my hands sweaty, um, made me have butterflies, made me think about what I was saying to this person because I didn't want to give her the F wrong idea, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, while we were talking in a way that made me anxious, um, I basically, she was telling me about this girl in her class that was crying because she didn't get her homework done. And basically, like, I basically, uh, <laughs> uh, oh god, um, yeah, uh, told her that I thought this was kind of immature. I thought, like, hey, you're an ap academic. You're supposed to be, like, here to learn. You should be like, yeah, I'm going to do my homework. And I know that's not realistic for everyone, but it's like, hey, you, that's your responsibility. And I expressed this to her, and she turned to me. She was like, Maddie, you're so toxically masculine. And I looked at her right in the eye, and I was like, yes, I am. And then I was like, what does that mean? Um, <laughs> and it turns out... Toxic masculinity means a lot of things, but in the moment, I thought it had something to do with the way I looked. I know I don't exactly look like a girl, but I am a girl. Um, so I went home and I journaled about it. I talked to my therapist about it. I had like a quarter, quarter life crisis, and it was just kind of made me think a lot. And then I finally looked up the definition and well, thank you, Wikipedia. The concept of toxic masculinity is used in psychology to describe certain traditional male norms of behavior in the United States and Europe that are associated with harm to society and to men themselves. Such toxic masculine norms include the traits of dominance, devaluation of women, extreme self-reliance, and the suppression of emotions. So, that's a lot. <laughs> and I, you know, thank God I took AP Lit because I was able to put it apart pretty easily. So. Things that stuck out to me. Traits of dominance. Man, I love being the best in video games. I like being the best at whatever I'm really doing, but not really in a dominant way. I, in fact, am kind of an introvert, and I don't really like to talk to people that much, but um, I'm, in a way, even submissive, but I'm not dominant. Um, devaluation of women. <laughs> Can I tell you how much I like girls? Oh, my God. Um, but, like... <laughs> I am one too, so that doesn't really make sense either. Um, extreme self-reliance, I get that from when I was a kid. I grew up, kind of had not the best childhood, kind of had to rely on myself a lot. Um, and the suppression of emotions. Well, if you notice anything, what I said previously is that I journal, went to therapy, figured it out, dealt with my emotions in a very healthy way. Um, so I'm handsome, but not toxically so. Uh, so, one thing I forgot to mention about this leader in a GSA, oh god, that didn't come out, right. this girl was a leader in a GSA, local GSA. And this is why this disturbs me, is because, like, this could be a feminist argument, this could be talking about, like, you know, anti-feminism, feminism, everywhere in between. This isn't one of those arguments. This is, this is a GSA leader offending a gay person. And I think that's why this is horrible. Um, I was just utterly disappointed with this. Um, and I guess this is really just a symptom of man-hating. Uh, and that's kind of a big term and kind of intimidating actually, but you know, it's just, it, it's not really good to generalize people. And as a GSA member, you're supposed to be celebrating people's differences. And it was just really hypocritical and hurtful in a way. So one thing I want to clarify is, you know, being masculine isn't toxic. That's the big key, key takeaway because I feel like toxic masculine 
both are kind of brunt words, but um, masculinity is not anything to be ashamed of in any way, shape, or form, particularly um, whatever gender it's on. Um, it took me a long time, 18 years to be okay with the way I like to button my plaid all the way, all the way to the top of my neck and all, you know, wearing vests. The way I look, kind of boyish, androgynous if you're fancy. It's just, it took me a long time. And to have somebody who claims to be representing my community talking about it in such a way, it's just absolutely disgusting and terrifying to think that, like, that person represents my community and she's just blindly blanket terming people. And it's just absolutely ill educated and just insensitive. Um, so I have different ways of expressing myself. That doesn't mean that's bad. So I journal, therapy, blah, blah, blah. This person finds a way using the idea of a man and the patriarchy or whatever to get her negative emotions out in the world. I think that's just, again, as a GSA leader, very irresponsible. Um, so big take home message for this is don't listen to people who think they know what they think they know what they're talking about. I mean, I could make an allegory about how Donald Trump is in office because he totally deserves to be there, right? Like, it, I feel it's sort of the same situation with this. Is like anybody can be in a position, and that doesn't mean that they have like question everything essentially. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs>